in large parts of North America, we have a heat wave. Right. Really hot. Um, so I'd like to invite a practice. Yeah. Mm, yeah, this is good. So go outside, get hot. Yeah. Hot and thirsty. Then find a way to provision yourself with a very cold beverage. Yeah. Icy water. Good spring water would be good. Iced tea if you come from the South. Um, and then drink it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then be conscious of three things. Right? The first thing, the first two are not in any particular order. Uh, one is to recognize that you did it. Yeah. yeah. You fucking pulled it off. Yeah, yeah. You needed a cold drink and you got a cold drink. Meaningfulness in, the, in that sense, right? Yeah, the yeah. means to an end, yeah. which is not trivial. Right? It's a right. real deal. Like you knew it, you knew it needed to be done, you could pull it off. Like that's a real thing. Second, be aware of your body, yep. like the felt sense of meeting your needs so artfully. And by the way, it feels really good yeah. on a hot day to have a cold drink. This is why Coke sells it, right? Why they turn it into a standing reserve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, now here's the tricky one. The third one's the tricky one, which is how it moves from meaningfulness into reverence. Is see if you can notice in that moment of awareness of the meaningfulness in both the practical sense and in the sense of the felt sense, the the always there, always present sense of connectedness or sense of flow, sense of of being, right? Sense of consciousness, whatever you want to call it, right? I'm just I'm having this is amazing. I, I, you know, I'm almost going to become a Jungian here because of the synchronicity. So. I've been starting, uh, you know, I do the morning meditation class and we sort of went through um, everything that I could teach them from what, you know, the Eastern tradition, the Buddhist and the Taoist traditions. And now we're moving to the Western Western tradition and we're starting with Epicureanism. And Epicureanism, of course, is completely misunderstood in modernity. Epicurus was not about being sort of hedonistic and partying. It's about trying to find those pleasures that are uh, the most reliably accessible to you. Right, that, that, that's the, the key move. So, so you know, and, and, and proportion your effort to how reliably accessible that pleasure is. And, 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 and give priority, by the way, to mental pleasures over purely physical indulgences because they have wider scope. So mm. the, the language of mental and physical is a little bit anachronistic. It's like give, a way of rephrasing that is give priority to the more meaningful pleasures than to the ones that don't carry with them. Ah, as, ah, I mean, ah, yes. Okay. So take that, and so I've been teaching, and this comes from Emmons' work and others, I've been teaching them uh, a, a practice for realizing the, the, the state uh, that's at the key of Epicureanism. The thing that you want to get to is called ataraxia. Ataraxia is all often translated as, as peace or tranquility, um, and it's often sort of understood in sort of um, privation terms. You're free of tumult, right? But, it, but, but there's actually a very positive content to ataraxia. And so the savoring exercise looks, looks like this. It's like, so Epicurus was in a garden. It's about like you go for a walk and you're trying to go for a walk where there's living things initially to do this practice. And what you do is you savor. And what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, no sentences or scenes in your head. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Empty headed, coupled to the world. Okay. And then open up perception, open up your sense of like how combinatorially exposed. Notice all the details. Let, your, let yourself be flooded with right with that but so that's the bottom the top down is uh activate your prehension prehension is how you project patterns and look for all the patterns and let let that also come into full activity so it you know and so what you get <laughs> okay got it right is you get this you get this tremendous sense of the presencing of everything and it's a, it's this participatory sense of just the presencing of being and it's a kind of flow state and what what you get and this is what my students are reporting to is you get this sense of the j pure joy of being the pure joy of being and then what happened then of course once you learn to savor in this sort of very natural thing you start to translate it to things like well drinking a glass of water eating your food and then you move it up into savoring speech yeah it's what you something you do and you you because at the core of epicureanism is the virtue of friendship where it's not just people are being buddies 
but friendship means this ability to enter into philosophical companionships, as Lahira talks about, where what we do is we learn to savor the presencing of intelligibility in human mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. And that is always easily accessible for us. And it is a pure kind of, right, celebration of just the joy of human being. And that almost always brings with it, as you indicated, that sense of connectedness and flow. It brings with it a, a deep sense of reverence. There's a sense of reverence that emerges from that. Because the, the, re the world, like, the world seems, you know, that you get all these symptomatic patterns and the, cause you pick up on all the texture gradients and the emotional tones and the tempo of the intelligibility, you know, Rusin's book, Bearing Witness to Epiphany, that there is a, there's a magical musicality to our intelligibility. Everything is patterning in a way that music is just the tip of this whole iceberg of the way in which things can be experienced as a flowing intelligibility. Um, and so I, just consonant with what you were talking about, I've been teaching them this Epicurean practice, and it, it, it's, it's very profound uh, for, as you said, I like the way you put it, for even in the most banal thing, all I'm doing is going for a walk in my neighborhood, or all I'm doing is drinking some water, or all I'm doing is talking with somebody, right? But I can, if I put myself in the right virtuous stance, I will recover this joy of being that is properly the, I think one of the things it affords is a sense of reverence. Yeah, yeah, and what I think is beautiful there, and I feel like it's like the same move we made when we were talking about faith, is that yes. it, it, it regrounds this thing that has been kind of thrown up there in a, um, I guess almost like a, it's almost like you're just building a capacity, like flexing a muscle or being able to like dance or have balance at all, right? It's like- Oh, but, but that's, that's, that's it. As you do it more and more, it just becomes more and more, I mean, easy, right? It becomes more present, more available, yeah. which by the way, life will give you all kinds of cool opportunities to have agonizing experiences and you can flex your reverence muscle in yes. the context yeah. of that and it gets yes. even yeah. more yes. yeah. Um And then, right, and then the point, like the kind of the nail on this thing is to say, and yeah, like this is uh, simultaneously, it's, it's not weird why this would be the case, simultaneously, or I guess trimultaneously, this will give you the felt sense all the felt sense of joy of life. It's a good thing. Like, it'd be nice to have that all the time. Yes. Um, it gives you the felt sense of joy of life. Uh, but what it also is, is it's the actual, the reason why that's the case is because it's actually the most adaptive way to be. Yes. Like it's the way to be <laughs> in yourself, in relationship with other people, and with nature that gives you the ability to be most fully aware of what's really happening and able to be most fluid in yourself to be able to kind of flexibly respond and conform to what's going on. That, that's the thing. As you deepen the, the savoring practice, you get um, you get what I, I sort of call it shamanic shape shifting. What I mean by that is because it's a participatory thing, like, and, and this is sort of sounds very zen too. But you know, as you're walking along and you're you're like think of way the way music is outside you and inside you at the same time, mm -hmm. right? And when you like, here's the there there's some sand on the sidewalk and there's a texture gradient here. Well, you you, you actually feel yourself sort of shape to that. And, and then you zoom out and you, that's situated in the here's a tree and here's a sky. And then that zooming out is also a reconfiguration of your sense of identity. And then what you get is you get in that trajectory of the shape shifting, I'm using that metaphorically, of course, right? Which is maybe part of the basis because shamans actually did that kind of manipulation of identity, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in, what you get is you start to get in that trajectory, you start to get a felt sense of wow, there is this reservoir of identities possible within me, and even more so a reservoir, and not like not abstract possibility, like but a, a pregnant power in things. That, you know, and and, and you're, so you get a felt sense of that creativity you're talking about, that the world is actually always pregnant with more, <clears throat> more, more ways of being. And I have something smaller, but in, in correspondence, I, I have more ways of being that are also available to me uh, in because uh, I adapt, I evolved to adapt. Uh, I've evolved to adapt to fit to this world. D does that make sense what I'm talking about here? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I was just, I was kind of, I was trying to be there, like actually be in that yeah. place. Noticing, for example, that it gives rise to a really nice, like a real profound sense of care and carefulness. Yes. 
Yes. Um, yeah. But also at the same time, like there's also a sense of like potency. Like, yes. Yes. A place yeah. from which creativity is sourced, which is great, right? You, you like your creativity and your carefulness to be very closely linked. So you're, you're not accidentally inventing things that are too dangerous, for example. Yeah. Um, 